<laughs> if you're ever in Sacramento, California on a Saturday night, you can bet that you'll find me here in the shop recording footage for YouTube or editing footage or uploading something while y'all drunk ass motherfuckers walk by saying, Oh my God, why is he working? <sighs> Anyways, I want to get back to... Anyways, I want to get back to the questions that were on my Instagram. I know I kind of got off topic a little bit. She was looking bad. I know I kind of got off topic a little bit with, uh, of course, the course. And then last week I had to, you know, kind of let y'all know why I was gone. So I want to get back to the questions of, of uh, that was on the Instagram post. This is from Eric underscore Herrera underscore. It's his question. I see you follow Gary V. What are your thoughts on him? P.S. He is my idol. Um, Gary V is interesting. Gary V really made me think outside of the box in terms of like just staying in one thing and really understanding like who I am and, and really being comfortable with myself and pushing myself and not trying to like be something for the internet or put up a fake persona because he, you know, that shit never wins. Every single morning, any video that Gary V uploaded that day, I would literally watch, you know, let's put in some headphones and just listen and watch and just take in as much information. I think everything that you see today is, is kind of like a byproduct of like Gary V influence that he's had on me at least. I, I wouldn't be able to push out content that you're currently seeing right now and, and, and I wouldn't have been able to, I wouldn't even be, have had my course that I dropped, my online barber social media dominating course. He was so broad. So like it was hard for me to like really put it into words of like, all right, how can I fit this into barbering? So that I, I literally would just watch everything and like take things that I liked and tested them out and uh, that's one way how I just came about the course of like how I figured out the social media and how to work it as a barber. It was beautiful just to see everything come together like it really wasn't and uh, if you ever see this I know you won't but if you ever do bro, thank you. What is good y'all back again on Deluxe Sundays and this video is actually a little bit uh, This one's kind of special to me honestly. This is my boy uh, Cole of course. I've been cutting up for a good minute um, He hasn't been coming in for a while just work schedule and everything like that So came in with a, a hair transformation. I was like yo I have not had one of these on my YouTube yet So I might as well uh, get this captured um, like I said, this is special because this was actually the very first time I picked up the Wall Seniors um, to do a full haircut. I picked them up previously to like kind of do a small taper in the back of, back of the neckline once before, but this was like the first time I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna just go ahead and and, and uh, do a whole haircut with these. So um, when you see my techniques are fading, um, of course now like like later videos because I've had like about a month of working with them, you'll see different text, you'll see a different technique that I have that I've kind of mastered um, just due to the different guards going. Going from, of course, the uh, Andis Fade Masters to the Wall Seniors, um, they had the different clips, uh, clip settings. Um, so this was kind of like a, a, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of lost halfway through this cut. You're gonna see me kind of going over a lot of my work. You're gonna see me going over that right side a lot. Um, it just because I, I, I had no clue what the hell to do. I, I have cut with some Wall Seniors with the cords on them before, but like, uh, I mean, that was like two years ago, I think. And before I made the switch back over to the uh, to the Anis Fade Masters. So first and foremost, um, th this is gonna be like a, it's not gonna be a bald fade. This is more like a shadow fade. Um, usually when people don't wanna go all the way down bald, whether because they get irritation on their neckline or on their head, or they just like, they don't like that super bald look, they, but they still want it as short as possible. I always recommend a shadow fade. For my shadow fades, I usually go with the no guard um, all the way open on the clippers. So. Um, it gets at least that stubble and it, it, it's visible too. It's not like um, too short as it would be with the like the lever closed. So at least, you know, keep a little darkness, a little shade in there so I could taper out the sideburns and the back. And you can see that difference in there as well. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, with a three guard, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and uh, kind of go halfway up the head a little bit. This is gonna be like my, my uh, guideline from when the hair kind of transitions from the fade into the longer hair up top. Um, so I'm kind of just like getting a good kind of sculpting, getting all the way a lot of bulk. Like I said before, um, because this is my first time going at it, I had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> like I had no clue how to attack it with the, with the guard system. And uh, I just kind of freestyled it and, and uh, you know, I went, I, I worked my way down with a two guard open to close 
And then I went with a one and a half guard. You know, the walls got the little weird one and a half guards, but those are key. Like that's a key guard that, that you got to use. Um, and then I worked that open to close and then I think I'll transition to my one and, and uh, even looking back at this like going through the like when I was editing this I was like, oh, maybe this was not the one I should be editing right now because I don't, I don't remember how it turned out But uh, you know, I was I was thoroughly highly surprised at the end of the video um, Like I said, I I can't keep up with I I, I want to give you guys the technique of what I'm doing But it was so freestyle when I was doing this. I like even watching it right now I'm like bro. What is you doing? You just went from no guard now You're going to the one guard now you're going to the zero guard like I can't keep up with myself But basically what I do like a lot if I'm not if I don't know what I'm doing during haircut Let's say I switch something up or I'm trying a new technique, you know, and and I have no clue what to do next All I simply do is I try to um, get away from looking at that part of the fade that small sliver line that I'm trying to get out And I try to uh, like like kind of get a broader view of the haircut So I'll kind of take a step back see the whole haircut see how the aesthetic is and and of of his head Shape with the hair and how the fade fits onto his head and then try to get it the best way possible that I can envision it in my mind and literally just put it out there and and uh and kind of uh, mimic that on his head. And uh, now you see, after I get done with that, okay, well, thank God, thank goodness the thing is like blurry because that fade, oh, yeah, that fade looks choppy right there. I'm, I'm gonna fix it out, like I said, I'm gonna go back over it. But I'm just starting up the taper, you know, I, I go with the uh, slim lines, get that first uh, bald guideline in there, and then I go with the Andis Fade Masters to, uh, you know, transition everything into the rest of the hair. But, uh, you, you know, as you can see with that bulk line, that, you know, somewhat fade, I guess. And, I don't know what you want to call that. It's a terrible fade, but that somewhat fade, um, you know, that kind of little arc. That's why I always try to go with and, and uh, try to make sure that arc is fitting on the best part of his head. Now, right here, oh, uh, that one right there. Uh, <laughs> you can see I, I kind of went, I, his head kind of has like a little bump back there. And you could see right there. I, I was like, I was sweating during this one. I was like, wow, this is during a YouTube video. Let's see how this shit turns out. But thankfully, um, that little lighter spot that happened, um, it happened low enough on the fade that when I went back through and fixed it out, I mean, towards the end, it fades in completely, you know? So whenever you're doing a haircut and, and you go come across something like that, don't panic. Because <laughs> the panicking is the worst thing you can do because you're probably going to make it worse. Just, uh, you know, kind of stay your course and try to just blend it out. And especially with that, I didn't try to, like, go in and try to, um, like, like, uh, hammer that thing out and like trying to go in with as short a possible guard. I really just like try to, like, basically what I said, I took a step back and just shaded it in, like, like as if I was coloring. I, I, I use like the clippers as like pencils now, you know, like I'll shade it in. I don't gotta press in too hard, like, I'll press in softly and make a nice smooth blend. And, and as you can see, like, that looks a lot better. It's not the best, there's still a little bit lighter spot that I gotta go fix, but it looked a lot better than when I first finished the fade. Um, so then hopping over to the other side, I kind of had a little bit better idea and, and then I kind of switched it up on this side as well. You'll see me a little bit later on. I angle his head. Um, you know, I, I see like a lot of the UK dudes, they'll angle the head and they'll flick out very viciously. I don't do that anymore because I was able to, to figure out how to, how, uh, to cut best with my technique and, and I don't really like pushing a client's head down, but for some people that works. Um, just because of like the angle of their hand or the way they're flicking or the way they hold the clipper um, Angling the head a certain way and then flicking out you'll get that nice natural fade along with it We're still cleaning up. I, I still have no clue what I'm doing just uh, tapering out I guess <laughs> and then uh, later on you will see me going with the clip over comb You did see me on the other side going clip over comb to get out that bulk um, like I usually always say throughout my, whenever I do a clip over comb technique, um, I'm not trying to fade. I'll go and clip over comb to get it, to get the shape, to kind of get that line, that bulk. So if you look at like from, uh, from the front view, you'll see like that bulk. I know I didn't get it on camera, but you see that bulk hanging over. What I'm trying to do is get that bulk to kind of, um, fit all the way up alongside the head perfectly. So I'm not looking at the fade part, but I'm just looking at the frontal view. If it fits the frontal view, I know I can go ahead and go in with the scissors and then uh, work that fade out as well to kind of make it nice and buttery. Um, but it's that, that's a little bit harder to do with, with um, with like clips and, and clippers w without a comb because you know you're flicking out a lot you're only getting one surface area um it, it's it's I, I, it might be damn near impossible i i don't do that at all i prefer a clipper over comb if i'm trying to get that aesthetic um and then go ahead and uh, line up the arch as natural as possible um but like I, with a lot of these longer cuts why i've been doing it and uh, is uh, really working in there with my sheer game and and, and really um 
trying to get like that that darker transition to, to fade in nice and nice and perfectly because you know you'll get like little darker spots I've, I've found different techniques now that you know i'm looking at this video like come on bro what, what are you doing just do this right here that i do now but uh you know i kind of get a little annoyed watching myself cut when i find something different but um you know it's all a learning process like i said this is probably well, this was this was when like maybe a month and a half ago. So I, I'm a month and a half in of of, of using the wall seniors. Um, so I mean that's a that's an all right fade. I think I could definitely hit him up better now that I know what the hell I'm doing with my seniors. But uh, you know I think for not knowing what the hell I was doing at first, pretty satisfactory. And then like I said, I go back over the other side because uh, I I figured out you know maybe bending his head and, and angling his head a different way would work. Like I said, some people it works better. I tried it out. I didn't really like bending my clients' heads like that. Uh, some clients are kind of a little bit stubborn. They don't want to move their head. Or their, their their necks are kind of stiff, so it kind of gets awkward when you kind of <laughs> when you push and they kind of push up against you. And like, bro, come on. Like, I'm trying to get you to go a certain way. Come on, help me a little bit. Um, next, gonna go ahead and he. You know, I haven't seen him in uh, probably about a month and a half, damn near two months. So that top definitely has to come down. Um, whenever I have a client that I haven't seen in a while. Um, and they come in, they want to cut a lot off, not just like a little trim. Cause I'll get clients that, you know, they want little trims. So, uh, I'll, I'll go, I'll work my way from the back, um, to the front of the head. But if I get big chops like this, where I gotta, I, you know, I, I want to make sure my, uh, what is it called? All the hair is kind of like all evened out. Um, I will take the section right from down the middle and I'll start from the, the forehead area and, uh, I'll cut, I'll stretch it out. Out of the angle of way where it's growing so you don't notice me like I'm not pulling it straight up because that that frontal part is on a curve on his skull so you want to pull it straight out from from wherever the head curve is and you see me pulling his head kind of standing straight up so I can get that um, hair nice and um, perfectly and then I just work my way back um, and and I will go shorter I don't think I really went too much shorter going back but usually I do go a lot shorter kind of angling it down because that top of the head that back of the head it does sit higher um, on the skull than the forehead area. Um, if you kind of just look, you know, the forehead area, it's slanted down. So the hair on, on, on the back part of his head is gonna be um, appearing a lot longer, even though it might be like, you know, you you, uh, you uh, measured out the same length as the front, it's just gonna naturally sit taller on his head. So I always try to angle it and cut it a little bit shorter, but not too much shorter so it stands up, but just shorter so it sits nice and perfect on his head. He doesn't look like he has a little bump on the top of his head or his head doesn't look overly enlarged for some reason. And then after I get that middle section, um, you know, I'll comb over, uh, comb over that middle section to one side, and then I'll just take, start taking, uh, what is that, horizontal sections, I guess? Yeah, horizontal small sections going from back to front, using that middle part as my guideline um, on both sides. Now, what I do here is uh, I'll, I'll take, I'll part it, like, as if I'm going to part um, the head just to kind of um, get that little side part a little bit shorter so, so all that kind of flows in nice, and you'll see me kind of... All the, I, I didn't. I guess I didn't get that on camera. But uh, taking all the rest of the hair and, and uh, getting it nice and combed over. Then of course, you know, you always gotta use your deluxe beach spray. I highly recommend using a sea salt spray. This is a sea salt spray, which adds a ton of grit and texture, as well as shape when you're blow drying, as well as protecting it. Um, you know, I, I use this every single time I blow dry, just because. If you blow dry for too long, you can damage the hair. So I always want to put something in it that protects it. Not only is it, does the uh, Deluxe Beach Spray protect the hair, but it also gives it a shape. So when you blow dry sometimes, you know, the hair kind of flops over and then you have to add in hella product. And then the hair kind of gets weighed down or just looks hella greasy. With the Beach Spray, you're gonna get this nice little hold, this nice natural light hold. Um, as you're gonna see, it looks like it's just holding right then and there in place. Once it starts to dry out, and I make sure it's fully dry first um, before I move on. but to afterwards I don't got to use that much uh, product I'll put in a little product of course afterwards um, to kind of give it a little bit of texture and 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 hold the shape a little bit but he could literally walk out of the shop like that and be completely fine if he wants to wear, wear his hair completely natural and uh, that's the beauty of, of any uh, sea salt spray especially deluxe beach spray and uh, I'll put that in the in the uh, description down below for you guys for anybody who wants to purchase on my website I also have a styling powder styling powder is also a great way to keep your hair super super natural um, like I said link is down below in the description um, and then of course you saw me go ahead and put that nice little part in there I went ahead with the clippers first and then uh, going over with the razor 
Before I leave you guys with the ending of this video, I just want to remind you guys I do have my online course out strategies and the exact model I use on how to get uh, gain followers on my Instagram and build my brand. I know it's very hard for some of you um, starting out in the barber game, um, trying to gain a following and trying to get recognized and trying to get your videos to go viral and start popping. I provide you guys with the exact model that is foolproof. I'll put that link down below as well. You can uh, go ahead and add in my online course. It'll coach you through exactly what you need to do to go ahead and get your uh, videos with more engagement and while your videos aren't getting more engagement and that's a very very um, pisser when you can't understand like bro why is nobody seeing my shit I'll put that in the description down below tomorrow the sale ends so I highly recommend you go ahead and make your purchase on that and that is the end of the video not bad for the first time for using my uh, wall seniors I think this came out all right I really do think I barb up now a little bit better that I have a better feel for the wall seniors very good clipper like I said these are my main clippers now Thank you guys, and I'll see you next week on Deluxe Sundays. Got some more heat coming for y'all. Don't forget to go ahead and purchase not only your Deluxe Beach Spray, but also your new era barber course dominating social media. I'll put those two links down in the description below. All right, we out.